good. All right. Um, yeah, so thanks, uh, Paul and Ted, Mike, for, um, uh, for chairing this meeting up top. Uh, my task over the next seven minutes, which is quick, is to talk about some of the newer data that we have from the self-expanding uh, series. Um, I think it's been quite a ride uh, for the self-expanding uh, piece. We were always about three years behind the Sapien um, investigative team in the United States, but I think rapidly fixed up. And if you look at the lower right-hand side, really it's been from 2014 uh, that we've really introduced the Evolute. And the data that I'm going to talk about today is with a whole variety of interactions now with the FDA and with the Medtronic uh, clinical team, whereby the newer iterations of the devices, the Evolute uh, 34XL and the Evolute Pro, were really approved with 60 patient 30-day registries, 60 patient 30-day registries. So that's really a marked iteration in terms of, um, of, of how quickly the FDA has been responsible to get this new technology. And I'd also say that our Pro was approved in the U.S about six months now before, four months before before it was in Europe. So it's actually a very, very good thing. Shashil has done a very nice job talking about uh, the differences between the different devices. I think one thing that has held true with the super annular devices with the, with the Evolute and the Core Lab are the very low gradients. This is five-year data now from advance, virtually no changes in the mean uh, aortic valve gradients at 8.9%. Uh, when we looked at the randomized Notion trial, which was an all-comers trial focused primarily on low-risk patients, randomized to the legacy core valve or to surgery, you'll see that out to five years, a sustained reduction in the gradients with TAVR compared to, um, compared to surgery. And I think this is important because now we see with the surgical valves going 12.5, 13, 13, 13, 13 13.6 kind of marching up, where the core valve uh, devices are actually staying relatively stable. So if you believe that hemodynamics are an important component of long-term durability, at least we're in a good place right now, uh, five years in low-risk patients uh, from the Notion study. And then, of course, we know now from Mike's work within the Sertavi trial that that also seen out to two years uh, randomized surgery versus the, uh, versus the core valve. And Mike's really talked and presented previously about the non-inferiority that we demonstrated 24 months uh, with core valve compared to surgery itself, um, with all-cause mortality, but numerically, as Shashil's pointed out, these are lower stroke numbers. The only thing I'd add to what Shashil said, I think it's partly because the devices are better. I think it's partly because we actually ascertain the strokes in the surgical group a little bit better as well. Uh, once we had, uh, once we had a very, very good look at that. Uh, certainly differences we've seen now. Um, now the two gaps, which I'll talk about just over the next couple minutes, are the two gaps were the larger valves. As you recall, the 31 millimeter legacy core valve classic, um, now I hope no longer available because we've got such a better iteration now with the, with the Evolute, is a, is a valve that will allow us to treat annular diameters between 26 and 30 millimeters um, with an oversizing ratio uh, that's, that's, that's up in the 20% range for this device. Um, we presented the 60-day uh, patients to the FDA, resulting in the approval of this device at 30 days. These are average age. These were all meant to be um, high and extreme risk uh, patients. Uh, this is the total degree of paravalvular regurgitation, total, total regurgitation at six months. I'll have you focus on the right side of the screen. 2% moderate to severe uh, paravalvular regurgitation, 26% mild. The rest of them are really in the, in the, the, the done to trace uh, category. So, so this 34 XL, because it's oversized, because it seals, because positioning's better, because it's retrievable and repositionable, getting down to very, very acceptable six month rates of, of moderate to zero. So I, I think we're almost over this problem, particularly since the mild degree is down to 26%. Now the next generation, which is now in your hands, is called Evolute Pro, it used to be called Evolute 2.0. It's, a li it's different from the, core, from the Evolute um, uh, 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 R device because it has a very thin pericardial wrap. The pericardial wrap is about a tenth of a millimeter thick. I didn't think that was going to be important. As it turns out, I was completely wrong because that 0.1 millimeters of pericardial wrap increases the surface area contact by eightfold. And as I show you the results that we have from John Forrest and, and Matt Williams, um, uh, the results are pretty spectacular. Let me show you a result, uh, a, a case here that we, we enrolled in our trial. Mike, this is after approval, so I can present this case here after approval. This came from our Evolute uh, uh, Pro Registry. 
Um, big chunk of LVOT calcification. I'm not sure how that got through Mike's screening committee or not, but it did. Uh, there's our nice uh, coplanar view. Uh, Evolute Pro, uh, now I'll just show the positioning of this, up around the arch, and then positions very nicely with the typical Evolute uh, way, um, released, and then, you know, bioairtography, just almost no paravalve, with that large chunk of LVOT calcification. So uh, what do the results say? Uh, and this is what the, what the uh, TEE looks like. Well, what are the results? Um, John Forrest, I don't want to compromise too much from what they're um, now is in, is, 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 has been submitted for publication. Uh, but at 30 days in these 60 patients, uh, there were no cases of moderate to severe paravalvular regurgitation, including that case with the tough LVOT calcification. And 27% had mild, 72.4% had none or trace. So I think this is a fairly robust now tool for us. It's the one that you have now in your hands. The only um, downside of it is it is 16 French rather than 14 French, uh, but still goes down to, to uh, iliofemoral lumen diameters of 5.5 millimeters. Uh, with very acceptable, uh, I'd say superb hemodynamics, the average uh, at 30 days, the average mean gradient uh, was 6.4 millimeters of mercury, which is great. So I think that it, in terms of where we stand very quickly with the portfolio, uh, we've done a huge job in reducing paravalvular regurgitation, which was four years ago with our extreme risk patients about 15%. They, we got better with high risk, we got better with Evolute, and now with Evolute Pro, we're down to 0% moderate to severe at 30 days. So we made a huge uh, problem. I think primarily the Evolute Pro has a thin pericardial wrap that increases the surface area, and I think that's why we're getting the results we do. I did mention, but it's in John and uh, Matt's paper, the permanent pacemaker rate with the Evolute Pro is 12.6%. So it's a lower permanent pacemaker rate, perhaps, due to the pericardial wrap being next, less traumatic to the LVOT. And I think the 34 now gives us a large diameter, uh, makes us. So that's the update with Evolute. I think we've come a long way in five years. Mike's a real instrumental part of that. And I want to thank everybody for their attention.